Okay, let's talk about that aqueous business, the aqueous solution. 7.5 aqueous solutions of solubility, compounds dissolved in water. So an aqueous solution is a homogeneous mixture of a substance with water. So this isn't like oil and water, where it's heterogeneous and there's you know, two layers. This is where it's thoroughly mixed, it's the same throughout. Now, not all ionic compounds dissolve in water, but the ones that do, they usually dissociate into their component ions. Dissociate means they come apart. So sodium chloride comes apart when you put it in water. Here's an illustration. When you put sodium chloride into water, all the sodium and, ion and chloride ions dissociate. They come apart and they move around and they distribute themselves evenly throughout the, the liquid water. There are no NaCl units present in this solution. Substances that do this are called strong electrolytes. So a strong electrolyte is something that dissociates completely into ions when you put it in water. Pure water does not conduct electricity. If you remind me in lab today, and I told my students this yesterday and they didn't remind me so I forgot. If you remind me, we have um, a thing like this and I can do a demonstration of this with the actual light bulb and it's, it's kind of neat. But if you, if you hook up a light bulb to a power source, and we don't use a battery, we use the electric current from the outlet, and you put the two ends of the wire in a, in a glass of pure water, the light bulb will not go on. Now, you may say, but you're supposed to avoid water during a thunderstorm. Well, lightning is a tremendous amount of electricity, and that can pretty much go through anything it wants to. Um, but more normal amounts of electricity will not pass through water. If we put salt in the water, the light bulb will turn on, almost like we've turned a switch. Because the sodium and chloride ions dissociate, they are charged, and they are able to move and carry the current. Electric current is the movement of electrons. And so you need something charged that can move the current. And so this is where electrolyte, that term comes from, is related to electricity. Strong electrolytes will conduct electricity in solution. Um, so many ionic compounds are electrolytes, and this, this word is also used in terms of, you know, sports, and you need to replenish your electrolytes because you were sweating a lot. You need to replenish the sodium and the chloride and the potassium and the other ions that you lost in your sweat. And so it's actually um, very much related. Let's look at silver nitrate. Silver nitrate has this polyatomic ion, nitrate, NO3. Silver nitrate is a strong electrolyte solution, and it dissolves and dissociates. When it dissociates, the silver ions separate from the nitrate ions. But a polyatomic ion like nitrate does not come apart in the water. It stays together. Remember we talked about them being like a bundle pack, and they're shrink-wrapped together, and they have to stay together. The oxygen and the nitrogens are covalently bonded together. They're super glued together. They can't come apart in a situation like this. So it dissolves, but the polyatomic ions remain intact. Not all compounds, <clears throat> not all ionic compounds dissolve in water. Silver chloride is one that does not. So if you put silver chloride into water, <clears throat> excuse me, what you get is the silver chloride just sits in the bottom and does nothing. The silver ions and the chloride ions are too much attracted to each other to dissolve in the water. There, there is a you know, very good explanation behind that, but I don't think you really want to hear about it just yet. So those do not dissolve. So we talk about solubility. We say that a compound is soluble if it dissolves in that particular liquid. Now, often we're talking about water. Does it dissolve in water? But there are other liquids, and so it's not always just water. If, it's, if it doesn't dissolve, we say it's insoluble. Okay, that prefix in means not, not soluble. So how do we know which ionic compounds dissolve and which ones do not dissolve? 
Well, um, there's no clues from the periodic table, really. Um, all of this was determined experimentally. And it was pretty simple. You know, you take some silver chloride and you put it in water and you see if it dissolves. I'm like, nope, that doesn't dissolve. Okay, let's try this, try it in this, try it in that. Try different things. And then they come up with some solubility rules to help us um, predict whether things are soluble or not. So your book also has a, um, some flow charts, and if those make more sense to you, you can use those. Um, but this is the one I'm going to teach you how to use because it makes more sense to me, and I'm the teacher, so I can do that. So this, this solubility rules table, um, and I'm not going to make you memorize it, so you can breathe a collective sigh of relief on that one. Um, but you do need to know how to use it. So the top part, this top section, these are the compounds that are mostly soluble. So lithium, sodium, potassium, their compounds are mostly soluble, and ammonium compounds are mostly soluble. Now there's a bunch of exceptions to, to many of these mostly soluble things. The exceptions are listed over here. For, that, for those first ones, there's no exceptions. So ammonium anything is going to be soluble in water. Ammonium carbonate, ammonium selenate, ammonium nitride, any compound that you have with ammonium in it will be soluble. Um, nitrate ion and acetate ion. If these are in the compound, it's soluble. There are no exceptions. Chloride, bromide, and iodide compounds are mostly soluble. They're usually soluble except if the cation is silver ion, mercury 1 ion, HG2 2 plus, or lead 2 plus. If you have one of these three with one of those three, it's insoluble. It doesn't dissolve. So silver chloride that we just, was it silver chloride? Or silver, I think it was silver chloride we were just talking about. Silver chloride does not dissolve in water. Because here's silver and, and chloride doesn't dissolve. Um, sulfate compounds are mostly soluble, except if the cation is strontium barium lead 2 plus or copper 2 plus. Now, copper 1 plus, copper 1 sulfate is soluble, copper 2 sulfate is not. Um, and then these guys are mostly insoluble with listed exceptions. So hydroxide and sulfide compounds are, are insoluble except for lithium, sodium, potassium, ammonium, or if the sulfide is with one of these guys. When the hydroxide is with one of these guys, it's slightly soluble. And then carbonate, phosphate, these are generally insoluble except with lithium, sodium, potassium, or ammonium. So let's do this real quick. Determine whether each compound is soluble or insoluble. C-U-S. Well, we have to go look at the table. Um, copper isn't listed in these rules, but sulfide is. It says when sulfide pairs with calcium, strontium, or barium, it's soluble, but that's not the case here. We've got copper. So this one is insoluble. So that's insoluble. So we'll finish this example on, well, maybe my husband will finish this example on Friday. We'll see what he does. <laughs>